It's my nerd world, and welcome to a Depeche Mode podcast. I'm your host, John Justice, back for another show this week. I'm not going to lie, I had some thoughts about doing the show this week and whether or not I was going to do the show, and I'll explain further. You're probably guessing what I'm talking about, but we'll get into it. There is a little bit of news to report, and unfortunately, it's a lot like the news that we're seeing on the TV and listening to on our radios right now, and as much as it's not good, especially for us Depeche Mode fans. So I'll bring that news to you. Plus, we are going to wrap up our look back at all of the Depeche Mode releases in chronological order. We're on our last one. We're going to talk about Spirit. Not going to be as lengthy of a conversation on Spirit, probably, as I've had on other albums. Because if you go back into the My Nerd World, the Star Wars podcast, you will find a lot of podcasts devoted to Spirit since it was the most recent album released. However, we are going to complete the complete chronological look back at all the albums on the show this week and we'll talk about a couple other things including uh depeche mode their songwriting and some interesting observations watching taylor swift uh, oddly enough her uh, documentary on netflix miss americana all right let's go ahead and get to this week's show it is brought to you by the science fiction space opera series embark written by john justice hey that's me i have some details and some information um, about the books to share with you at the end of the show this week so glad you decided to check out my nerd world a depeche mode podcast my nerd world I am really glad you're with the show this week, and I hope that you find it a welcome reprieve from the news at hand that is sweeping across planet Earth right now. I mean, this is a global issue when we get into the whole coronavirus, and there is no part of the globe that isn't being affected by this. And I know the show has a lot of international listeners as well, so uh, my prayers are certainly with you regardless of where you are. Um, here uh, in America or uh, overseas. Uh, Again, my thoughts are with you. Uh, We're all dealing with the same thing together as we attempt to shake the disease. You didn't think I was going to get through the show without making a Depeche Mode pun, did you? And shake the disease certainly (laughs) certainly came to mind. Um, So getting into things, I do want to talk a little bit about this. This is obviously a Depeche Mode podcast, but um, I would be... It would be tough for me to not bring up this coronavirus pandemic that we're all suddenly um, dealing with. And it's affecting all of our lives on a, on a, on a daily basis now. Uh, every single hour, new information and news is is coming out. And I'm not going to get into all that on the show. That's what I do as my full-time job as a uh, talk radio host. I'm an introvert. Um, and I'm kind of a weird introvert. I just I like to be home. I'm a homebody. That's probably an easier way to say it. Um, so... I'm perfectly fine being at home and enjoying all the things that fill my life with joy, my family, my my religion, uh, and of course my my love of of Depeche Mode. And so, as these days and weeks drag on, I'm sure that I will be um, spending plenty of time revisiting a lot of Depeche Mode material, just getting my 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 mind off of what we're, what everybody is dealing with and what we're all being being affected by. And that's one of the great things about Depeche Mode is. You know, what a friend they are to those of us that are fans and how meaningful the band is to to us. You know, and it's something that's a constant theme on the podcast that I talk about a lot. But, you know, it's that level of comfort that's really important in these times. Uh, and it's, it is. It's super important to, you know, be able to go, in, in my view, and... Enjoy those things that give us joy in our in, in our life, and that certainly is Depeche Mode. And so, like I said, uh, I'll be spending a lot of time, and I've already started going back. and I really, really like the documentaries that Depeche Mode puts out, um, especially the ones that we get uh, when it comes to the making of the albums. Um, I'm still disappointed that we have yet to have gotten one uh, a, a proper sort of documentary on spirit and i hope that's something that the band will consider doing sometime in the near future so uh we will talk about spirit uh here in just a moment and this will be wrapping up our look back our retrospective look back at all of the albums released by depeche mode um i do have one news item however uh to start with and it's a bit of a bummer uh depeche mode just within the past two hours i'm recording this on a thursday depeche mode in the past two hours their twitter account uh tweeted out Due to circumstances beyond our control, 
And in order to ensure a simultaneous worldwide release, the release date of Spirits in the Forest DVD, Blu-ray, and CD has moved to May 1st. Thank you for your patience and understanding. Um, So that's a bummer, but I can probably tell you why it's happening. And it's happening because of exactly the reason why... Um, exactly the reason and the thing that I opened the show up with. It's happening because of the coronavirus. Uh, it was just announced a moment ago that Norway um, has basically shut down. Uh, the entire country of Norway is 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 shutting down. We know that Italy it has been completely quarantined off, and there has been a lot of discussion, um, obviously, in other countries of similar things happening. Uh, President Donald Trump here in America announced last night that they would be um, they would be halting overseas flights apart from goods and services. Uh, I imagine that sometime in the near future, that may also be ex- expanded as well. So that is, in my opinion, the reason why. And specifically in this release from uh, the Depeche Mode Twitter account, uh, in order to ensure a simultaneous world ri- worldwide release. Um, so that means that most likely the band didn't simply want bootlegs to get out into the public because there's going to be a lot of places around the world Um, And a lot of places that are big Depeche Mode fans that are going to definitely want to get their hands on this physical DVD, Blu-ray, and CD that we've been talking about over the past few episodes that aren't going to be able to do it. So, smart move by Depeche Mode. You know, they need to do what's right, what's best for them um, as a band, and what's, you know, what's best for them when it comes to the money that they need to make. The music industry has changed so drastically over the course of the past decade. And, you know, album sales aren't enough anymore. You know, bands have to tour to go and make money. And physical releases like this release are going to be very, very important when it comes to Depeche Mode, the money that they earn. I'm sure they're doing fine, but they deserve to get paid for the content they're putting out there. And putting it out on the release date when a bunch of people uh, don't have the opportunity to get it in certain parts of the world, I can understand the band's move. I'm assuming... But I'm going to guess most likely I'm right. Um, I can understand the band's move of saying, hey, let's go ahead and pause the release, uh, the physical release of this, until these other countries that we want to make sure we get this um, this release out to are able to go and get it. It's a bummer. I was really looking forward to getting my hands on the full Berlin, uh, final Berlin concert of the, of the Spirit Tour. Um, so, yeah, I was bummed. But at the same time, it's only a month. And it's something that we can continue to look forward to. And those things are really, really important right now while we're in the middle of, of dealing with, with all of this. So hate to start off the show on such bummer notes, but it is what it is. Uh, so curious to, to get your thoughts, you can always email me, talkshownerd at gmail.com or leave a comment up on YouTube uh, as well. Uh, I always love hearing from you. And, and again, just really appreciative that you come in and check out the show uh, every single week. So let me let's shift gears and get over to Spirit really quick. And since again, this is the the last album that we'll be looking at because it's the most recent release from Depeche Mode. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the the creative process when it comes to the band, right? Um, and the the sort of lyrical change up that happened in Spirit. I talked quite a bit. Uh, when when the uh, when the album first came out, and by the way, I've got the um, so I have the the physical release in my hand, and what I have is the uh, is a special edition. So it's got two discs. Uh, the first disc was which is the uh, entire album, and then disc two has the Jungle Spirit uh, mixes of Cover Me Scum, Poison Heart, Fail, and uh, and so much love. Um, and so this comes in the um, in the gatefold with the uh, with the internal um, booklet that comes along with it. Um, again, this is a really nice. Um, a really nice release that that's exactly the same style of release that we got from um, from Delta Machine. Uh, and this is what's got me, just as a side note, I really kind of want to get that box set because I'd like to have a complete set of all of a one type of released version of Depeche Mode. And so it would be, it'd be cool, they're probably won't going to do it, but it'd be cool if they went and re-released all the albums in this same sort of booklet packet. I don't expect it, but this does go along perfectly 
with side by side with um with spirits in the in the forest uh and you get in you got the liner notes you got the uh, the amazing anton corbin pictures you've got the uh the lyrics in here and the artwork uh the, the artwork as well but as i talked about when the album first came out um the band went political and was very vocal in the promotion of the album about how um they were getting political, how influenced Martin was and Dave was to a certain extent by what was going on in the world. And and it's a combination of a couple of things. You know, the album came out in 2017, which actually kind of struck me when I pulled it out to do the uh, to do the show this week. I've been listening to the album as of late. And uh, when I went and grabbed the actual physical release and I saw the 2017 date, I was like, wow, we're three years out from this album, which also got me kind of excited because Depeche Mode works in this you know, quasi four year window. And, um, I'm expecting that once they get uh, past the rock and roll hall of fame coming up in May, which I, I hope isn't affected by this coronavirus. Um, I hope that we get an announcement of another record being produced. But when the, when the band went out on the press tour with this, they were very, you know, open and honest about how, you know, they, they, they couldn't simply ignore what was going on in the world. And again, I think it was a combination of the 2016 election uh, here in America and, of course, what was going on with, uh, with Brexit. Um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie. Um, I, I, I really do like the album. Um, the lyrical content does not grab me in the same way that past and, and recent releases have because of the political content. And this is really a personal thing for the host you're listening to, John Justice. I, my full-time job, Monday through Friday, is on a news talk show, uh, the Justice and Drew show here in, in Twin Cities. And so we talk, I mean, I talk about politics for a living, for crying out loud. Not exclusively by any stretch, but um, it is. it does make up the bulk of the conversation that we have. So I really like to disconnect from politics outside of the show. Outside of when I'm prepping the show and when I'm on my own time, I like to get myself away from politics to to decompress and to disconnect from that so it's it's a bit of a bummer again for me personally that the band went political in in the way that they did now thankfully there's a lot of ambiguity in the politics on the record so it's not like ruined for me doing that thing with my fingers by any stretch of the of the imagination um and i'm going to go through and kind of share some thoughts track by track on the uh, on the album and i'll talk a little bit more about my personal feelings not just about the music in and of itself on the album but of um the lyrical content as well i thought it was really interesting though because the comments made by Martin Gore and and Dave mirrored a bit of what I saw recently in the Taylor Swift Miss Americana documentary that's on Netflix right now. Um, I'm a Taylor Swift fan. I mean, I, I mean, I'm a fan. I had never gone to see her live or anything like that. Um, I really liked Reputation. Didn't particularly care as much for Lover, but I also haven't spent a lot of time with it. Really liked the album 1989, but I don't have any other albums other than that. So that's the kind of fan that I am. Really liked 1989 from Taylor Swift because of the 80s sort of tinge to it. Really, re I like top to bottom, I thought Reputation is a fantastic record. I really like the production on it. As a matter of fact, there's a lot of production on the album that on Reputation that reminds me a lot of Depeche Mode. Um, but I also um, really like learning about the artists themselves, especially for artists that create music that I like. What was really fascinating to me about the Taylor Swift documentary and why it relates to Depeche Mode is that the first half of the documentary, you find out about Taylor Swift and how she became as famous as she did and how she reached where she reached. And then, you know, the, the, you know, to become arguably one of the most popular, if not the most popular female singer on the, on the, on the entire planet. The second half, though, of the documentary gets into how she starts getting more involved in politics, starting with Tennessee, the state which is her home state, and, and some of the issues there that she didn't like, and, and some of the elected officials that she was trying to push back against and, and encouraging people to get out to vote. And it was really interesting to me because it, it felt very similar to what Depeche Mode did with Spirit and kind of where their minds were at and where Taylor's were at and how they mirror one another. An, another. And what I'm speaking to is what inspires the music and the songwriting when these artists go to sit down and make new music. Um, when they're younger, obviously, those things of, you know, love and lust and with Depeche Mode drugs and things like that, 
those are the primary driving factors, right? Songs of faith and devotion, right? Those are the those are the primary things that the band was into. And I really do think it's part of the genius of the band and what makes them so appealing to you and to me is, you know, how Martin Gore in even being ambiguous, and I use that word a lot, but it's relevant in his ambiguity of songwriting and leaving it kind of open to interpretation, you know, he was very much in touch with who he was as a man and and lust and love and what it means to lose and to have feelings for somebody. You know, as we get older and with Depeche Mode specifically, you know, the band cleans up, stops drinking. Dave, thankfully, was able to do something that you rarely hear about in the rock world and kick a kick a nasty, and I say nasty as an understatement, almost a life-threatening um, heroin uh, addiction, right? Um, and then you now have some success in life. Your lives are going good. You don't have the turmoil to draw from. And so, obviously, you're going to have to pull from other places. Not all the time, but a lot of the time. And in the Taylor Swift documentary, it, it, it appeared to me that she'd reached this pinnacle of success, had gone through some old, some, some of her own you know, uh, problems that actually disconnected from the world for a year because of the flack that she received over the Kanye West incident and all that. And this is not a Taylor Swift podcast. I just want to use this as an example. And and then when she comes, you know, she comes back, she makes reputation. It's a massive, massive, huge success. She's back. She's found love in her life. And now she's doing politics. There's a cycle to all these things, right? And I think it's more relevant with Depeche Mode because they're obviously much older than Taylor Swift. But that's the vibe that I got. And I, I'll be very curious to see if the band goes back to writing uh, the song, you know, the the pain and suffering in various tempos that so much, you know, that, that many of us are, are used to. And for me personally, that I, I enjoy more. Um, not the first time, and I highlighted this on previous podcasts, obviously not the first time. The band has been political, probably won't be the last. You go back to construction time again, and then and it was a very similar circumstance where the band was definitely impacted by what was going on in, in, in the world. And through that, produced some very classic Depeche Mode songs that weren't even about love, especially when you look at a song like Everything Counts, but were more about the world we live in and, and, and life in general, right? Um, all that being said, spirit with some of the political edge the songs have, never reaches the same heights, in my opinion, that those older tracks do. I go back and listen to those older tracks from Construction Time again, and there's a luxury there, obviously, of nostalgia for those songs that I like a lot, and I've been living with them for a lot longer. Um, but the the tracks that get political on spirit just don't just don't hit that chord for me personally. Right, and it probably has a lot to do with nostalgia. Maybe years down the line, I'll go back and listen, listen to Spirit, and have a a difference of opinion of it. Uh, and again, this is not me ripping on the album at all. And I'm going to go through the tracks here in just a moment, and kind of share my thoughts and and where my where my head is at uh, on it. It is just to say that um, I think I would have liked this album way more had it not had such a political edge to it. Um, so let's go ahead and talk a little bit about it. Uh, and we'll just go track by track and I'll give you, my, I'll share some of my thoughts because I do think there are some amazing songs on here and starting with going backwards. And this is a song that lyrically, um, while it's got a political bend to it, it's not, it's not so overt, like say poor man is, you know, to a certain extent. Um, that's a song that I just don't enjoy on the album, and I'll get to it. But I really do like Going Backwards. I thought it was the perfect concert opener. Uh, the first time I heard it, it struck me. It was the perfect album opener. Um, the music in it is fantastic. The lyrics are are good. They don't they don't take me out, and that's kind of what I'm talking about. Sometimes some of these lyrics, I hear them, and it kind of it takes me out of the song. And I don't like to be taken out of the song, right? I want to live in the song, and I can live inside Going Backwards. And as a matter of fact, it's funny because. When I was working on Embark, uh, my first science fiction space opera novel, uh, which again has a protagonist in it that is a massive Depeche Mode fan and it's filled with Depeche Mode references. Um, I'm actually writing a fourth book right now that's a spinoff book that I'm not going to give you the title right now. But if you're a Depeche Mode fan, when you see the title of this new book, you're going to laugh. You're either going to roll your eyes, you're going to say, that's cool, or you're going to be like, John, come on, I know what you did there. 
not going to give it away just yet. But when I was writing Embark, I actually, going backwards, was was um, was on my mind quite a bit in the middle of that in the middle of that process. Um, I'd actually envisioned in my mind a video that could accompany that particular song where people were trying to escape off the off the planet. So that song actually um, had a bit of an influence when I was writing uh, my first uh, science fiction space opera. Um, Where's the Revolution is a great song. I, I really like it. Again, it's got a political message to it, but it's not so overt that it takes me out. Probably one of the strongest songs on the album and probably, in my view... Well, not probably. It is, in my view, one of the strongest um, first singles uh, to that Depeche Mode has released in uh, in quite a long time. Um, the worst crime grew on me, and now I really like that song. Uh, that was one at first that didn't really stick with me, and the more I, the more time I spent on the album, the more that I really, really enjoyed, uh, and st- and still do enjoy uh, the worst crime. I really like that song. Then we get into a couple of uh, a couple of ones that I go back and forth on. Um, I scum is one of those tracks, and I'd be interested to hear from you if you deal with this too. S- when it comes to Depeche Mode music, scum is one of those songs that I really, really want to like, but I just don't. Um, I'll listen to it. I'm not necessarily skipping it. And I hear it and I go, man, there's so much in this song that I should really, really enjoy. But there's something about the way they put it together. There's something about the the how jarring it, it is that it just doesn't doesn't work for me. Um, and it's and it, it, it kind of throws me off. And I'm curious, again, if you if you experience something similar uh, with Depeche Mode songs where you go, man, there's a lot about this song I should really like, but it's just not working for me. Um, you move is a little bit better. I do like you move, but it, it, again, it feels like one of those tracks and there's been so many of them over the course of the past three or four records where it just, it feels like it's missing a little bit of something. Uh, and again, I, I don't, I can't put my finger on it. It reminds me a lot of like heaven, like heaven is a Depeche Mode song that I feel like I should really love, but it's missing this middle part that it just doesn't feel totally complete to me. Then we get to Cover Me, and Cover Me is my favorite song on the album, and probably one of my favorite Depeche Mode songs of the past five years. Um, I, I love that song. It's one of the songs that I listen to It's uh, almost when I go to bed almost every single night. Um, it was beautiful the first time I heard it. It grabbed me the first time I heard it. Um, it spoke to me the first time that I heard it. When I read Dave Gaughan's explanation about how it was supposed to be sort of this this storytelling type of you know story um, about it. And again, I covered this on previous episodes. Um, I loved it even more. I just think it's a really special, unique, and classic uh, Depeche Mode song. Uh, Eternal is another one that not a very strong Martin Gore track, in my opinion. Um, I skip over this one quite a bit. If I put together a, comp- a compilation of Depeche Mode songs from Spirit, uh, which I have, that one I'm not putting on it. Uh, I'll go back and revisit it every once in a while, but it just doesn't do a doesn't do a whole lot for me. Uh and it's funny too because it does remind me of a track that you would find like maybe on Black Celebration and it might be because I'm older, it might be because I'm a little bit more critical than I was when I was younger, but Eternal just n- never did a whole a whole lot for me. Uh Poison Heart however really does. Love that song. Also listen to that song all the time. It's got, uh, again, if you look at my iTunes playlist and the number of times a certain song's been listened uh, to, Poison Heart is way up there. Um, it's 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 got a run for its money um, to to cover me as my favorite track on the album. Um, uh, you know, I, I'm kind of going to take that back because Poison Heart's right there. I just love that song. And the, the part of the song that I really love the most that I wait for with anticipation uh, anticipation is the part of the track where Dave does the, you know, we've been walking down this icy road line. It just gives me goosebumps every single time, uh, every single time I hear it. Uh, so much love, classic Depeche Mode. Uh, it falls into the, uh, the, the, the category of um, uh, uh, soft touch, right? Uh, falls under the category of Soothe My Soul. Just that driving, uh, it's no good, that driving Depeche Mode classic track. Uh, I really, really dig it. Uh, Poor Man is 
hands down my least favorite track on the album. And I, I like it from a musical standpoint, but the lyrics just do not do anything for me. And that track in particular takes me out every single time I listen to it. Uh, no More This Is The Last Time I do enjoy quite a bit. And I find myself listening to, to that one a lot. It doesn't sound necessarily like classic Depeche Mode in my opinion. But I really do like uh, No More This Is The Last Time. And then you get to Fail, and I love Fail. And the thing that I love most about Fail... Well, let me start here. What I don't like about Fail is that Martin Gore curses. I'm not a prude by any stretch of the imagination, but I prefer my Depeche Mode to be curse-free. Um, but I love, love, love the the heavy, thick, beefy drums on Fail. Just absolutely epic. Love those. I would love an album just filled with that. Um. I would, I will say, I hope that they bring on James Ford again for another record. Uh, I thought that he did a great job with the production. I think that this, the album sounds fantastic. Um, one of their better sounding records in terms of the quality of the audio that Depeche Mode has put out in a long, long time, in uh, in my opinion. And I, I hope they bring back James Ford for another record and... I really hope they do that from the standpoint of I can't imagine they would do another record that has as much sort of political edge to it as Spirit is. And my expectation would be that they would fall back on what they've done before. Um, and I would like to see what James Ford could do with Depeche Mode a second time around. And especially if they switch back up to their, you know, sort of normal um you know pain and suffering in various um, in various tempos but i would really like to hear from you and get your and get your thoughts and as i say often on the show um the thing i love about the depeche mode fandom is that we're all very accepting of each other's people of each other's opinions and we don't drag each other down if we disagree on certain things and you know i get comments and and uh, on youtube and 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 via email talkshownerd at gmail.com all the time from uh, from people who you know have different albums and disagree with me on particular records and that's cool man i'm glad we do art is subjective so i'd really love to get your thoughts um for uh, for the next show on uh, on spirit and uh, whether or not you agree with some of my assessment on there um and i know some of you don't a friend of the show john justice john j-o-h-n justice i know that he loves poor man so there's one disagreement that we have talk show nerd at gmail.com uh drop me uh, drop me an email or leave a comment on youtube if you're uh, if you're watching it uh, watching it there so look that wraps up the show as always i want to encourage you especially if you are going to be locked up at home quarantining yourself or just not going out uh, a lot if you like science fiction at all, I don't care what science fiction it is. I don't care if it's Babylon 5, Doctor Who, Star Wars, Star Trek, doesn't matter. If you're into science fiction at all, please support my nerd world and go and pick up uh, Embark Book 1 or Embark and Embark Book 2, Treasure in Darkness. Book 3, which will close out the trilogy called The Vanishing War, is coming um, in uh, April. It's coming next month. So... Uh, get up to speed on uh, the story now before the third and final chapter of this arc comes out. Uh, work has already begun on, um, on book number four, which is going to be a spinoff book. I can't give any more details other than uh, as a Depeche Mode fan, you're going to love the title for this book. Or you're going to eye roll uh, so hard that it'll turn into an email. You'll send it to me and going, John, I can't believe that that's what you called the book. Um, so there, there's a bit of your tease. Uh, that being said, when that book comes out, you're definitely going to want to have read uh, books one, two, and three because uh, the third book, or excuse me, the fourth book is a single spinoff story about one of the characters from the first three books. So you definitely want to go and check that out. You can get them at Amazon.com exclusively or on Audible and audiobook, but you can also get the audiobook on Amazon.com in ebook, paperback, and audiobook. The ebook is only $2.99. So pick up a copy for yourself if you haven't already or gift it to a friend. It would really mean the world to me. So if you're curious, and this is the first time you've heard about it, um, what the story is about, here is what the first book in the Embark series uh, is all about, and then I'll be back to close the show out. For Earth, the end is near. Only a reluctant hero and the girl he loves have the power to save humanity's future. It's the not-so-distant future and car culture is replaced by air and space flight, made possible by two of Earth's largest corporations, flight mechanic Taft Guardia 
spends his free time racing through the skies with his three best friends and the girl he longs to be with, headstrong Kate Amaro. With the planet on the brink of an industrial apocalypse, a powerful and ruthless corporate madman, Sint Argum, moves to exploit the disaster with his covertly created military. When Taft, Katha, and their friends uncover a shocking secret, Sint Argum will stop at nothing to find them. Time on Earth is running out, but with the help of a ragtag group of young pilots, they'll fight for humanity's future and survival among the stars. My nerd world. Hey, look, if you're like me, well, I don't know if you're like me, but I like to theme my reading and my movie and TV watching about what is going on in the world. Not all the time, but I do often. So if you want to read a story (laughs) about the world coming to an end, (laughs) it's a positive one, though. It's a lot of fun. Uh, Go and pick up a copy of Embark. Again, look for Embark, uh, uh, book one, and Embark Treasure in Darkness on Amazon.com. Pick up the ebook, paperback, or uh, audiobook. Price to sell. Perfect reading material or listening material while you're stuck at home avoiding the coronavirus. Be safe, everybody. Um, and again, prayers out to, to, to all who, uh, who listen to the show. Uh, we're all being affected by this, and we're all in it together. So thank you so much for checking the show out. We'll be back again real soon. Drop me an email, talkshownerd at gmail.com. Leave a comment on YouTube and go to Amazon.com right now. Support the show and pick up a copy for either you or a friend of my Embark Science Fiction Space Opera series. Talk to you real soon. Bye.